In my last video, I did a couple of distressing experiments on these George jeans and then just started distressing anywhere and everywhere on them just for practice. No design, no aim, just roughing them up. But they are a nice pair of jeans, you know, looking like a blank canvas since they don't have any wear on them. And I don't like wasting anything, especially pants. So the goal of this video is to make these test pants into something I for sure wear out. Now I edited this video in a different way where it shows more of the raw process of me working on these pants with longer shots. This was to give you guys a better look of the process in action when I work on DIYs. So for those who want to get into this craft but don't know where to start, hopefully this video will help. Alright, let's get it. My plan was to practice the distressing techniques as much as I could, so I unconsciously decided to just fill in the entire pant leg with distressings. But it was a little rough handling the toe hitch while the pant panels were intact, so to make it easier, I planned to open up the inseam to create a big flat area of fabric where everything in the space was accessible. But before I opened up the inseam and started distressing on the back, I wanted to add in the flare panels already since I was already working in that area of the pants, and it'll be the last time I touch the flare panels once they're sewn in. When the distressings were done, I didn't want my legs to be shown through the holes, so I added in backing using a scrap test shirt. It doesn't really matter too much what you use for this, just bear in mind that you're more likely to see the backing the bigger the hole is. So this can also be used as a layering technique. As great as it is, finding a new technique for distressing, you can't go wrong with just using a rotary tool, especially when you want to cut out specific shapes and lines that have that roughed up edges look. Thank <laughs> you. 
Like I said earlier, adding in backing is a great way to create a layered look, especially when used to repair holes like I made here. But with the glue holding the backing in place, and since the area is accessible for my sewing machine since I opened up the inseam, I sewed around the perimeter of each distressing to secure the backing. Please don't rely on just glue for this part. Darning kills two birds with one stone. It seals in the distressings and frayed fabric while at the same time adds in another design to your project. But of course, that just depends on how you sew it in and what color thread you're using, contrasting to the color of fabric you're sewing on. At this point, the distressings and repairs are done, but I just can't help myself. I gotta add in some kind of hand sewing somewhere, whether it be on the outer rim of a distressed hole or in the open, creating designs. Before closing the pants back up, I added in more darning to seal more of the distressings on the other pant leg and to add a bit of symmetry to the pants. Again, these were a blank canvas, no wear, no fading, and I personally just prefer a more worn look over new. So I tested this bleaching method with this new spray bottle that I bought that shoots out its contents like mist rather than streamlined globs, which should disperse the bleach evenly. In theory, that's why we're experimenting.
The size of the original waist fits, but it was just uncomfortably tight. So the goal is to extend it by at least half an inch to give my stomach some room to breathe. Probably the more professional way to do this is to replace the entire waistband with the correct size, but I personally like the patchwork repair look. So I just spliced in part of the waistband from the same pants I used for the distress repairs to add in some continuity, but does it really matter? Not really. The waistband extension could have easily been sewn in with my sewing machine to speed up the process, but in turn, it'll give off a different look compared to if I actually just hand sewed it in. Hand sewn stitches gives off a manually repaired look, which I think looks the best since it exemplifies the hard work and hours that were put in. I'll be honest, I like to sometimes admire past projects I've worked on and just reminisce about them, and hand sewing to me says a lot but hey, that's just me. That's one of the main reasons why I like doing this DIYing stuff. You gotta be proud of your work.